Hi Steve, another great sale coming up on September 30th with some exquisite and rare mid-century from an estate where the gentleman was a very good friend of Carl Springer, starting with this pair of Carl Springer snakeskin one drawer end tables. Uh, and right here we have a nice lucite console and atop the console we have an extremely rare and beautiful bone inlaid and brass Carl Springer lamp and over here for your accessories on your desktop. We have a nice bone inlaid desk signed on the base with the Chagrin interior. Moving right along over here, we have some nice lucite stools. And from a different tone, Steve, and a different estate is this beautiful George Nakashima walnut table atop a trestle base with beautiful book match top and three butterfly hinges on the top, rosewood hinges and into uh, some nice 18th century. We have this beautiful burrow wall of 18th century chest with beautiful inlay on top of it. Quite nice size raised on bracket feet. Over here, Steve, we have a Steinway & Sons Model M piano. What's nice about the piano is it's ready to go. The board has no splits, which is unusual. It came from a, uh, the home of a woman who plays it quite regularly. If you're moving into this room, we have an awful lot of mid-century and other stuff, so I'm going to let you just pan the room first to have a quick look around and then I will try and focus in on some of the highlights for you. Okay, right here, Steve, from the Carl Springer State, we have this magnificent little table here. Look at the design of the animals and stuff on the top of it, natives on top of it. Over here we have a Paul Evans Cityscape console and mirror. This came from an upstate uh, home. We have, in the style of Gio Ponti, this full finished table here. We have these Milo Bauman chrome and upholstered chairs here. This is a nice size chaise, good for uh, the psychiatrists in the collecting world. This is probably Milo Bauman also, nice size with a chrome base. And here, I think this is one of the nicest pieces in the stale, stale is this uh, Carl Springer. It's a leather, I suppose you could call it veneered piece with Aztec design, probably uh, inked into the leather. It's slightly as is, there's some bits of uh, wear on it, but however, it could be stained over again in the pattern. Here we have from the same estate as this, this was in the lobby of the estate, was this bone inlaid, beautiful mirror by Carl Springer atop this beveled and two-tone console. Looked great where it was, looks great there, in fact. Here we have a nice console, Burl Walnut in the style of Paul Evans. And here, Steve, from slightly earlier, the Art Deco period, we have a three-piece set, possibly by Donald Desky, but in really, really great condition. No pitting, the upholstery is good, and it's nice the fact that it has a nice three-piece set. And now, Steve, before I give you over to Bruce Anderson, let's just have a quick glimpse. We have this, what we think is Vladimir Kagan cloud sofa. In front of it, we have a nice mid-century Lucite-based coffee table. This is a nice brass and Lucite coffee table here, and this is sort of from the 80s, a nice lacquered little love seat, and we got a pair of nice sarin and tulip tables here. And with that, I'm gonna hand you over to Bruce Anderson, who'll finish the sale, and we'll see you on September 30th. Thank you. Thanks, Ron. We'll continue our video walkthrough here with a pair of, with two Chinese, antique Chinese landscape drawings, ink wash drawings. It's hard to see the beautiful detail under this glare glass, but they're good antique sign drawings with collector seals on them. Uh, a very desirable Hans Wegner Papa Bear chair, an ottoman. This should do very well. These are very sought after in today's market. And here a 19th century Japanese ebonized game table with a beautiful gilded lacquer top with raised relief, if you can see this exquisite detail. Elephant legs with probably ivory or faux ivory tusks. 19th century. An 18th century, late 18th century sort of country directoire, fruitwood sewing table in all original condition with star and compass inlay. And here, at least 19th century, if not early, are a carved and gilded frame with military motif. And here, Steve, a Dunbar wing chair, again, highly desirable to the 20th century market in its original Dunbar fabric, if you see here where it's marked Dunbar. And the fabric is really in pretty good condition, could use a cleaning, but there doesn't seem to be any 
tears, although the foam has gone hard. What a nice profile on that chair. And from the same house, a Jens Rism signed Jens Rism love seat. This upholstery is a little faded, but a nice model. Signed here. Original fabric. And here, Steve, a Limbert, an Arts and Crafts Oak One Drawer Library Table. Signed Limbert in the drawer, original hardware, original finish. And here, Steve, an oak dining room set, or we're selling it as a set with a 60 inch diameter round oak table and a set of five of these oak chairs with the carved north wind face in the back. Beautifully carved, one, ar one arm chair in the set. Two big leaves to the dining room table. And here, Steve, a mid-century clothes rack, sort of Geo Ponte in design. We don't know who designed it, but it's a very interesting piece. And here's a two-part mahogany, late 19th century wine cooler, Adams style, beautifully carved ram's head and hoof foot base. Hard to find and hopefully desirable. And here's a large American oak dining room set, including the split pedestal table, eight chairs, a big server, the china closet, and the small server, probably Horner, in a dark finish. An original Tiffany Studios acorn and oak leaf leaded shade. I wish we had a light behind it for you. It's beautiful glass. And here, Steve, an 18th century paint decorated Venetian commode, all original. Hard to find it in better condition than this, original hardware. And above it, a French Trumo mirror. This is just the way it was in an apartment in Manhattan when we took them out. And here, Steve, a pair of bronze Art Deco candle holders, signed Seidel. And here, Steve, an 18th century, late 18th, early 19th century English Regency or William IV tilt top table that becomes library steps, a metamorphic piece of furniture. Hard to find this kind of furniture today. And hopefully it'll supersede the brown wood rule. A Jens Rism coffee table, teak wood coffee table, and out of the same local house, unmarked, but probably Jens Rism, a little three drawer nightstand or end table. Steve, a pair of Jens Rism side chairs. Really a nice design. Again, the foam's gone hard, but all original condition and finish. Out of the same apartment, unmarked, a mid-century, little chic little one drawer writing desk. And staying on mid-century, a very interesting pair of cast resin chairs all we know is they came out of the Woodstock, New York area and they're artist monogrammed right here. Although we don't know who the artist is. They, they have to be mid-1960s six, mid though. They need a little repair, but they could, they could be something very important. As nice an English Regency chinoiserie decorated tilt top table as you're ever gonna find. All original condition, gilded background, little painted figures, original stencil decoration on the post and legs, and beautiful original casters, paw foot casters. Three Chinese pictures we just got out of a local house yesterday in Rybrook, New York, including this uh, beautiful antique ancestral portrait of a seated man, quite large and very old. And in here, Steve, in our Smalls room, to stay on Asian from the same house, two antique, possibly Chinese, maybe Korean, original paintings, unsigned that we can see, but very good quality. And from another house in Rye, definitely 20th century, but a beautiful pair of yellow ground Chinese vases, large. Perfect condition, what a color on those. A three-piece lot, including two ginger jars with birds, but probably the much more desirable signed plaque here. Wonderful quality. 
We've not been able to see the back. And here an antique Chinese blue and white square vase that comes with paperwork that says that it's Qing Dynasty between 1796 and 1821. Don't hold us to that information, but that's what came with it out of a house. And to get off Asian for one moment, two pieces, one lot here, including a late 18th, early 19th century tortoise shell tea caddy, all original, including its inserts and probably a little silver monogrammed plaque to be sold with this English Regency tea caddy with ivory finials. And here, Steve, a pair of 19th century, probably French, maybe English, opaline glass vases, hand-painted with bird scenes, just extraordinarily painted, all in good condition, no chips or cracks, large pair. A pair of unsigned but definitely Caldwell table lamps. We have quite a few pieces of Caldwell in this auction, Caldwell lighting from New York City. And back to Asian, Steve, a large, I think 19th century, maybe 18th century, blue and white decorated vase. It's had one little repair here at the rim that's easily repairable again. And here, Steve, probably my favorite thing in this auction is an extremely rare mid 19th century coin silver, six piece tea and coffee set made by, made and signed Bailey and Company, Phila Chestnut Street, Philadelphia. And the entire thing is chinoiserie decorated, including little Chinese men for finials. And here, probably 20th century, but superb quality, a cinnabar, carved cinnabar storage box, Chinese, probably unused, 1940s, 50s, or 60s, but terrific quality and condition is a 19th century mirror with a beautiful white jade plaque inset with a beautiful white jade plaque and another lot here a little enameled Asian enameled item but a beautiful white jade belt hook turned into a letter opener as most of them were and and two exquisitely carved Ivory, Chinese ivory, probably uh, calling card cases in really good condition. Usually these are all split and broken. I wonder if you can see that detail. Little piece of the stickers left on there. And Steve, that concludes my walkthrough and I'll turn it over to Nelia and hope we see you on the 30th of September. Thanks. Thanks, Bruce. We've got a lot of great art in this sale, as always, an eclectic mix. We have pieces from countries all over the world. We'll start here with this French poster, nice antique poster of Josephine Baker uh, by Caron. This is a great painting by Smira Shawl, uh, 1965, oil on burlap, actually, of Yemenites, uh, one of a few Israeli items in this sale. Another work from the same estate, also an Israeli artist, uh, oil also on cloth of Israeli musicians, signed illegibly, uh, but, a, but a nice painting. These two nice balancing kinetic sculptures are by George Rickey, a renowned American artist, uh, usually does very large scale pieces. These are nice table sculptures, uh, balancing on a pin here stainless steel. This one you can see actually has a personal dedication for Ashley, uh, signed Ricky 1999. Uh, the consigner was a personal friend of the artist, so she did get these directly from him. This little piece here is by Charles Bragg, also an American 20th century sculptor. Nice little satirical deviled egg. Great piece. We have also a set of three prints by this artist. Nice caricatures. This is a reverse glass painting by a Croatian artist. If you call, recall in our last sale, we had two terrific Croatian paintings, both of which sold uh, over $6,000. This one is 1968. Uh, his name is Hjedzuic, uh, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. 
really nice piece. Uh, this one comes from an estate where we had several other reverse glass paintings, this one up here being uh, among them. There are two others, which we probably won't get to today. But nice mid-century pieces. This is perhaps the best painting in the sale. This is by Krishna Ara, an Indian painter who was working on the streets of Mumbai, uh, at the time Bombay. And he's known for his figural, figural works. You can see here he's really captured all the different characters he would have seen along the streets uh, in you know, the mid-20th century in Bombay. Uh, as we enter the main hall, you can see we have a lot of great mid-century sculpture, some marble, some alabaster. This one here is a nice brass Mayan sculpture by a local uh, Larchmont artist, Robert Zeidman, and this actually came out of his estate. We have four other, I'm sorry, three other pieces by this artist, this being uh, one of the most prominent ones we have in the main hall. These two large abstract works are by Leonardo Nierman. Uh, he's a Mexican artist, also mid 20th century, uh, one's dated 1960, one's dated 1959, uh, oil on masonite and an oil on canvas. These actually came out of Robert Zeidman's estate, uh, but they're a nice, nice set here. We have a nice large oil on canvas by Thomas Christopher, 20th century American street scene. A great pair of oils on canvas by Eugene Marin. Terrific dueling scenes. Oh, one of them is signed, one of them is not, but they will be sold as a set. The second one over here, you can see one of the swordsmen there about to hit his target chicken. And down below, uh, we have a Paul Cornoyer. This is a nice tonalist or impressionist landscape. It needs a little bit of work. We do have some tears here and it needs a bit of cleaning up, but it's a really beautiful scene. We have several old masters in this sale. This is one of a pair of Christ carrying the cross. There are a few other pieces around the hall, but you have to come into previews to see those. Up here is a French landscape, 20th century, Yolanda Artisson. Nice boat scene. Here we have a nice neoclassical painting by German artist Otto Hessler. This is a late 19th century work, just beautifully rendered. You can see the drapery and the, the details in the, the kingfishers there. This is one painting of a group of about 10 pieces by Alton Toby. He's also a local artist, uh, lived in Larchmont. And this is an, his homage to Calder, which I just think is a great image. You see Calder there examining one of his mobiles. Um, he worked in many different genres. This is a more realist piece. Uh, I'll show you over here some illustrations that we have, also by Alton Toby. So this one. Uh, was done for Golden Books, and the piece above as well is the soldier's illustration. We also have some modernist works and more abstract pieces by the artist in this sale, all from his estate. So that about wraps up the fine art. I'll send it over to Whitney, who will give you some of our jewelry highlights. Thank you. Thank you, Nelia. I'm Whitney Bria, and I'm going to be showing you a selection of jewelry from our September 30th sale. To start off, we have a blue sapphire, sapphire and diamond ring. This is a jade, diamond, and gold brooch that's in this auction. We have a matching ring and bracelet, which are onyx, diamond, and gold. This is a chatelaine with a merit and beau grand watch. These are both pink coral, emerald, brooch, and ring. Here we have a Maharaja necklace with a pair of earrings that were made specifically to match this necklace. Here we have a Victorian ensemble of a bracelet, brooch, and earrings. We have a matching blue lapis, gold brooch, and ring. We also have a large selection of cameos in this auction. And to end our jewelry rundown, we have a selection of Rachel Guerra, an Israeli artist, sterling jewelry. And this necklace specifically was illustrated in an exhibition catalog in December of 1973. And I think that about wraps it up for our jewelry selection for our September 30th sale. We hope to see you there. Thank you.